everybody. It's Brianna Hineke Hodges here for another episode of Future Ready Schools Learning Through Uncertainty. Joining us today is my partner in crime, Dana Castine, one of my most favorite individuals in the whole wide world. She is the Director of Instructional Services for Florida Union Free School District in Florida, New York. And I'm actually going to kick it over to Dana to tell us a little bit about who you serve and what your role is. All right, Bree, I am so honored to be here. Thank you so much. And partner in crime, you can say that again. Oh my, we get ourselves in trouble, don't we? <laughs> With that said, um, yes, I am the Director of Instructional Services um, in the Florida Union Free School District. We have a population of about 750 students, um, two school buildings. One is pre-K through fifth grade. The other is um, grade six through 12. And we're about 60 minutes Northwest of New York City, which is you know, a popular place that just a few people may, you know, may know about. Um, with that said, my role here in district involves lots of different areas, lots of different responsibilities. Um, they range from technology, technology infrastructure, technology integration, um, all the way through to data um, and data analysis, and also including all sorts of things in between, like instruction and Title IX coordination and all sorts of fun things. So if you name it, we, we probably are involved in my area in that in that area um, somehow, some way in the school district. So thank you. So Which much. I absolutely, I actually really love that because I think that it truly encompasses all the facets that learning touches. And I think that that's so often we have a tendency in school to to get a little a little um, granular, a little siloed, a little uh, uh, segregated and separated, if you will, by trying to keep some of those things apart. Um, it, it's a little bit refreshing to see that that take kind of come together to where it's like, wow, you know, technology actually does have a role in instruction and curriculum has a role in technology. And how do we bring all these things together and how are we keeping privacy and um, equity and accessibility and all the things in mind whenever we're talking about, about, um, about learning for our, our kiddos. So I think that that's kind of a new way and that's a fairly new situation, right? Like that, that's something that has, has come together in, in recent months for you, as far as like bringing those, those multiple hats together. Right. I think that that's kind of in my mind, something that I, I want to share with our, with our listeners as well as that part of the evolution of COVID and, and, and learning and, and all the different things is seeing how that has impacted our administration and our administrative roles has, And when you start thinking about um, you know, someone that's in a smaller school district, which we are, right, some, some people think that, oh my gosh, I have 3,000 students in my school district. Well, that seems like it's a lot to us, but, in, you know, for other places, it's very little. Um, New York is composed of individual school districts within a municipality as opposed to countywide, right? We have countywide assistance. So many times in a smaller school district, you wear tons of hats, right? My, my my background here should have baseball caps with all the different areas, but you know, with that said, you're right, siloing some of those, those jobs, let's say, or some of those areas in education is challenging when, yes, technology is involved in anything, and in, in, I'm sorry, in everything. When you look at data, data truly is involved in everything. In HR, curriculum, instruction, you know, and then I think about the tech piece that, that includes things like HVAC, and you mentioned cybersecurity. So being a person that's involved in so many different areas, it truly does help give a bird's eye view of where perhaps a district is and how you can navigate things moving forward. It, it's, it's definitely very helpful. And, you know, I can always talk to myself because I'm my own best person in all these different roles. So like, let um, me consult the person in this. Oh, wait, that's me. I wait, have a direct me. line. I have a direct line to her. That'll, that'll be useful. So as, as we're kind of talking through this, I feel a little bit overwhelmed, honestly, just like listening to all the different things that you have um, in your hands. And so can you share a particular challenge that, that you have had, you know, maybe that you, you've run into in, a, in, in how you're adapting to that? What are some strategies that you're adapting to, um, to better serve in this role? Well, that's a great question. And quite honestly, being a little vulnerable here now and divulging some, you know, personal 
information. Um, I think through COVID and even pre-COVID, there are some challenges that are out there in education, right? There's always challenges out in education and how we bring ourselves to work every day and how we face some of those challenges is incredibly important. And it's so easy to become overwhelmed, right? Every day, we, there's decisions that are made from, you know, from nine till 10 o'clock or from 10 to, to noon, we're making massive decisions. So something that I did and I've shared with some, some staff here in district is, um, what are three things that you're grateful for? If you start off every day with thinking, what are my three great things? Um, and you really dive into those and you really lean into those, you know, perhaps you're grateful for the air in your lungs that day. Perhaps you're grateful for the fact that you woke up. Perhaps you're grateful for the work that you have ahead. You're grateful for your family. There's so many things to be grateful for. And if we constantly look through that lens, if we choose that lens to begin our day, how different could your day possibly be? I don't know. It's made a huge difference for me personally. With that said, then at the end of the day, right, we, we accomplish so many things from, from the time we arrive, we run around and we're we're doing all different sorts of, of things. You know, me, me you, know, you heard some of the things that I do, but principals, everyone have incredible roles and shoes that they must fill. So at the end of the day, are we, are we kind of reviewing the day and saying to ourselves, what brought me joy today? Or are we thinking, what didn't I get to? And what do I have to worry about? So I've chosen to choose joy at the end of the day and think about what are some things that happened today that were really good and brought me joy. I literally live up the street from where I work. So I, I'm not gifted with a commute home. I'm not gifted with that time. And some people might say, well, well, that's a huge benefit and that should bring you joy in itself. But sometimes that time to decompress and take in the day, I'm not afforded that. So as soon as I get home, I'm on to my, my next role, mom, wife, you know, her kid mom. <laughs> so with that said, if I'm looking at what brought me joy during the course of the day, it's incredibly helpful. And maybe I was in a classroom that day and there is a student that I know uh, had this aha moment and that brought joy. Perhaps it was a teacher who was struggling with something or maybe it's they found joy and that brought me joy. So looking through that lens is incredibly important what's worked for me. Well, and I think, you know, kind of keeping that in mind that, that we have every decision, we all have, we have the availability to make a decision in every single second of our lives. We can choose how we're going to react to that, right? I, I know I spend a lot of time with my own personal children, helping them remember that all we can do is handle how we respond to other things. We can't change, you know, these, these elements that are around us, but we can change how we feel about it. Are we, you know, approaching something from a positive you know, idea, or are we bringing some negativity in that, of course, is going to cloud how we feel and how, how we take into that. So I think what a what an important um, model and reminder for that. So how are you you seeing this this experience that you're having, you know, in, in evaluating your day um, and, and kind of making a plan as you move forward? How are you seeing that move learning forward? What does that look like for you as, as director of instructional services? You know, you, you're, you've, you've got some opportunity to make some, some, um, some incremental change there. How are you, you know, seeing positivity and, um, you know, choosing joy and choosing kindness impact that learning environment? I think it's through the interactions that we have, right? And then modeling some of those ideas through those interactions. Um, you know, continuing to develop those relationships because we know that's so incredibly important. It brings so much social capital in when something may not be going exactly as planned, right? That social capital is so incredibly important. So with that said, I think it's meeting with teachers, having those conversations with them, working our way through, and then modeling that and even sharing with people, hey, you know what? What you think about, you bring about. So if we're thinking positivity, you're bringing about that positivity. Um, if you wake up in the morning and you're thinking about those three great things that are in your life, or maybe three great things that you have ahead, that embeds itself in within instruction because we all arrive every day somewhere. Right? Work is the place that we spend the majority of our time 
in our lives, whether you're, you know, services, a, a teaching, a staff member that's supporting um, students, you can be an administrator, it doesn't matter. We all arrive to work every day and we have this gigantic backpack. That backpack can be filled with lots of different things. So if we're looking through the lens of kindness, we're looking through the lens of being grateful, and we're looking through that lens of joy, then to me that helps the weight of that backpack that can come in every single day. So while you're having a conversation and you're learning that someone just experienced something in their life and you're bringing those ideas in, that does trickle down then into the classroom. And you can see some teachers then sharing some of that. We have some teachers that are doing yoga in their classrooms and you know, really going down to that granular level, as you said before, and, and just focusing on what is it that a teacher needs? What is it that a staff member needs? And what is it perhaps that that child needs in that classroom? And how can we make that happen? And if we're looking through that positive lens, I've found there's always a way to accomplish that. So modeling and, and just that lens, it's incredibly important. A good friend of ours, Tom Murray, right, always talks about the hidden stories and tells us, you know, we got to keep those in mind. Those hidden stories are for both our, our kiddos as well as our, our, um, our taller versions, right? So it doesn't matter the age or stage, we all carry that backpack, like you said, and helping unpack some of that, being aware of the weight of that backpack um, can go a long way in sharing the load, if you will, with, with our kids and helping them understand. You know, I think like you and I have talked about it. this is this is this the difficulty of um of of the last you know two years is not a is not unique to adults. It's it is certainly felt by our kids on a daily basis. And we are we we are hard pressed to model for our kids how to handle um, and, and be resilient through this process as well. And I, I think that, um, you know, I know I personally am going to take away that if you think about it, you bring about it um, idea of how can we better handle this and how can we really move forward in the direction that we want? Like we've got to give ourselves a reason to move forward. And, and, and I think that that's, that's important that you've, you've brought that into us. So how, um, that said, right, we can't, the world, you know, we also have out in the world today, we're talking about toxic positivity and, and, and not that, that you are in that by any stretch of the imagination, but how do we also acknowledge that things don't always work out the way that we expect them to, right? So nobody is saying like, just because you're a positive person doesn't mean that things don't go wrong. Doesn't mean that everything is right. Um, you know, I, I think you one of the things I appreciate about you as a leader is you are very real and you are very authentic with, hey, we've tried some things and we've learned some things. So with that said, what are some some opportunities for iteration that, that you personally are seeing um, come forward this year? So, you know, Brie, there's a couple of things that that I would lean into when, you know, we're talking about that, having that conversation, right? It's the um, the air mask on the airplane idea, right? We always have to take care of ourselves before we try to take care of others. Um, a wise person, a very wise person once shared that the work that we do in education is hard work because it's such hard work. Okay. That again, it's hard work because it's hard work. And as the adult, that's, that's part of what we're bringing to the environment. So things go wrong. It happens every single day, right? We're not looking for perfection. We, we're hopeful for perfection, but perfection is not always the end game, right? We want to make sure that we're at least, we're hitting a target. So with that said, we have lots of meetings with teachers and we make lots of suggestions and there's ideas. And I think it's really important as leaders to certainly make sure that you're taking the pulse of the room as you're having these conversations and seeing like, is, are we at a point where some may be feeling overwhelmed? Are we at a point where, just like teachers do in a classroom, right? Leaders are doing the same things with teachers and other staff members. So, so with that said, it's important to take the pulse of that and recognize. And then sit back and say, you know what? We get it. 
what's the one thing that's important? What's the one thing that you could move forward with? What's the one idea that you would like to learn about more this year? What's the one thing? Whatever that is, become the expert in it. Engage your students in your classrooms with it. Engage as a leader in that piece and take on that one thing. And once you feel confident, and at the end of the day, when you can say that that one thing brought me joy, then perhaps it's time to think about another thing that you can add on. Only until you feel that comfort. And I think in education, we kind of lose that because we have standards to cover and we have kids to take care of. And you know everyone's running around trying to, to help. And I think we have to stop, gather, listen, and plan. I think if we plan surrounding that one idea that will meet the needs of those that we serve, that's most important. Remembering that you can't do it all, right? I think that, you know, I, I, I heard this phrase um, a while back, which was, you can do anything, but you can't do everything. And I think that that is one of those things that I, I try to remember in those moments of being completely overwhelmed. I think as educators, we, um, we take that, that role on, right? We're like, yes, I can do this. I can do this. I need to do this. Kids are at stake. You know, the learning is at stake. We, we put so much pressure on ourselves that we try to be all the things all the time to everyone. And we need to stop, pause and say, I'm going to be this one thing right now. And I'm going to be it as best as I can for as great as I can, you know, for the effort and, and outcome. And then once that happens, then maybe I can move into that next role. I love that. I love, I love keeping that, especially from someone, like you said, who wears a lot of hats. Like that's a great reminder that even when you have a lot of hats, even when you have countless responsibilities, you can still only be one person at one time in one place and be that one thing really, really, really well. Real, right? That's all, that's all we can be is be real. Yeah. I, you know, pe people may say, oh my gosh, what is she talk? But be real. That's, that's what you, what brings you joy and, and be real in that. And if there's something that someone's struggling with, be real and say, I, you know what? I don't have this. I don't have it. And, and that's okay. It's okay. That so, you know. With that, being real, being, being, you know, knowing this, knowing that, that who you are is all you can be. I want to close today's episode by asking you what or who reminds you of your why? Why do you do this? Like, this is a lot of work. Why do you wear the umpteen thousand hats? Why do you, you know, keep doing this when we, we find ourselves in situations where we don't have perfect answers or perfect solutions? Why, why, what, what reminds you that this work is important? So for me, it's looking into the eyes of a seven-year-old and knowing that we've met needs. And, and needs, needs, general, the umbrella, we've met needs. It's making the difference. It's looking into the eyes of a teacher and listening, learning, noticing, and wondering, and understanding. What is it that I can do to help meet those needs? That's my why. My why has always been about what can, what is it that I could do to help? What is it that I am doing that may not be help? What is it that I am saying? What is it that I'm not saying? What is it that I'm listening to? So um, my why has always been to make a difference and to make a difference for all those that I serve, everyone. Fred Rogers says, look for the helpers, right? Like you are a helper and you bring so much to your community, to your district, to me personally, to Future Ready, to, to all the people that, that you surround, that, that we surround you by, I should say, because I, I know that every time I get to see you in person, which is never enough, but every time that I get to see you in person, I am just in constant awe that you have this magnet about you and you just bring people to you because you find that opportunity to share with others that, that that's who you are. You're there to help. You're there to um, learn with and, and from and alongside. And I, I just thank you so much for being a part of today. Um, I got so much out of today's episode. I hope our listeners did as well. And um, I'm going to 
close up our time today and say thank you, thank you, thank you um, on behalf of Future Ready Schools, um, on behalf of our podcast, Learning Through Uncertainty. Uh, we hope that you take some of these things, think about it and bring it about and um, bring joy back into your learning environment. So thank you so much on, on behalf of Future Ready Schools and thank you, Miss Dana. Thank you, Bree. Honored, privileged as always. Despite our good intentions, 2020 helped us clearly see that while each day brings a multitude of uncertainties, future ready leaders are leaning into those opportunities, leading necessary changes to address inequities and learning through uncertainty. Learning Through Uncertainty is hosted by me, Brianna Henneke Hodges, National Faculty for Future Ready Schools. In each episode, we'll connect with future ready instructional leaders and learners as they share their expertise, advice, and experience reimagining teaching and learning to better suit today's learners with tomorrow's techniques. Together, we'll reimagine possibilities, renew communities, and reinvigorate pedagogical practices. Together, we'll redesign environments, recalibrate services, and reconnect purpose, passion, and practice. Subscribe and listen to Learning Through Uncertainty wherever you get your podcasts. Go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Learning Through Uncertainty and Future Ready Schools are projects of all for ed, because together we're better, and together we're future ready.